Today, we're talking about why AI at CES is not just about cheesy gadgets this year. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Of all of the big annual conferences, the Consumer Electronics Show, better known as CES, which happens every January in Vegas, is kind of the weirdest. On the one hand, it is chocker block full of just absolutely ridiculous, almost definitely going to go nowhere gadgets that tend to shove whatever the hot new technology is in places where it completely doesn't belong. At the same time, it's in some weird ways the most creative because it is really raw and future looking. It harkens back in some ways to the old science expos of the 50s and 60s, where the point wasn't to sell things that were available right now, but to get a glimpse of a possible future. Now, for anyone who's been to Vegas for this thing in January, that might be highly over-romanticizing it. But even if you think that's true, it is undeniably different than other events. And so it's really interesting to me that this year, there seems to be a very clear tonal shift in CES that I think has a lot to say about where we are with AI. This is basically the third year in a row that CES has been filled with AI gadgetry. But the tone is very different. Last year's show was largely in that spirit that I was just describing of weird and wacky AI-empowered gadgets. A true shoving of AI everywhere, regardless of whether it belonged there or not. Especially last year, a lot of the core of the show was smaller companies showing off their ambitious uses of AI. This year's CES is very different. It seems much more firmly to be about the biggest players in the industry rolling out their product lineup for 2026. We got a big keynote from NVIDIA, who played a very minor role at last year's show. Amazon, AMD, and Google also used the first couple of days to unveil major new products and projects. And overall, the wacky gadgets took a backseat to more grounded and definitive products from tech's biggest players. Capturing the mood, Enchil Sag from More Insights said, Everything is AI now, so nothing is AI. It has reached such a point of saturation that simply stating AI doesn't really do anything. As Wired puts it, the rush of companies stuffing chatbots, computer vision, and intelligent sensors into their products has led to a sort of evening out. When products all offer similar features and use cases, they become harder to differentiate. Put more crassly, no one really cares about the AI TVs and fridges that clogged the halls last year. Same goes for robot vacuums and basic wearables. The novelty is gone and the utility isn't clear. This CES is much more about products that are going to define categories. And more than that, it also shows that the iteration cycles for the big players are speeding up, so they basically have to now use every conference as a roadshow event. In other words, NVIDIA can't wait till their GTC conference in March to talk about Vera Rubin. They need to get the press cycles in now. Which is, of course, not to say that there weren't some really cool things that wasn't just the biggest names in AI. For example, people are super stoked on the new LEGO smart brick system that has tiny ASICs and RFID to do lights and sounds in certain configurations. But by and large, this CES is all about the big companies putting their foot down about where AI goes next. And with that in mind, let's kick off with NVIDIA and Jensen Huang's keynote. How you develop the software fundamentally changed. The entire five-layer stack of the computer industry is being reinvented. You no longer program the software, you train the software. You don't run it on CPUs, you run it on GPUs. And whereas applications were pre-recorded, pre-compiled, and run on your device, now applications understand the context and generate every single pixel, every single token, completely from scratch every single time. Computing has been fundamentally reshaped as a result of accelerated computing, as a result of artificial intelligence. Every single layer of that five-layer cake is now being re reinvented. Now, in terms of the substance, a big part of the keynote was NVIDIA unveiling their next generation of AI chips. The Vera Rubin chips will become the next flagship to follow up from the Blackwell architecture. Huang said, Vera Rubin is designed to address the fundamental challenge that we have. The amount of computing necessary for AI is skyrocketing. The race is on for AI. Everyone is trying to get to the next frontier. Now, surprisingly, Jensen announced that Vera Rubin is already in full production, despite ongoing Blackwell deliveries and installations. The new architecture is an upgrade of both the GPU and CPU within NVIDIA's rack-based AI systems, with Vera being the name of the CPU while Rubin refers to the GPU. NVIDIA claims the Rubin architecture will be three and a half times faster than Blackwell on model training tasks and five times faster on inference tasks. 
The chip also represents a significant efficiency gain, producing eight times as much inference compute per watt of energy. Huang said that these improvements will combine to a 90% decrease in token cost for models running on Vera Rubin chips. The chipset has been designed assuming that AI researchers will soon be training 10 trillion parameter models, and NVIDIA expects that new ultra-large models will take around a month to train on the new architecture. They also estimate that training runs will require one quarter as many chips as they would if they were using Blackwell, which could be hugely significant. At the moment, training clusters are pushing the limits in terms of how many chips they can physically fit in a data center, as well as networking and energy constraints. Alongside an upgrade to raw power, Vera Rubin systems will also feature redesigned memory capacity designed for long-horizon tasks. NVIDIA's Senior Director of AI Infrastructure Solutions, Dion Harris, told the press, As you start to enable new types of workflows like agentic AI or long-term tasks, that puts a lot of stress and requirements on your KV cache. So we've introduced a new tier of storage that connects externally to the compute device, which allows you to scale your storage pool much more efficiently. Daniel Newman, the CEO of Futurum Group, described Rubin as an incredible generational leap. He noted that after the shaky rollout of Blackwell chips, this presentation reinforces that the ramp up in production for Vera Rubin is on track and should be fully available later this year. He commented, the pace of innovation continues to impress. Now, also at CES, NVIDIA unveiled a range of embodied AI models, simulation tools, and edge hardware in an effort to become, as TechCrunch put it, the android of embodied AI. Now, NVIDIA has been working in this area for years, but are doubling down on robotics in an attempt to deliver a full-stack ecosystem as embodied and physical AI move towards real-world rollouts. The company released a pair of new world models, Cosmos Transfer 2.5 and Cosmos Predict 2.5, designed for simulated robotic training and evaluation. They also released Cosmos Reason 2, a vision language model that allows embodied AI to see and reason about the world. Finally, they rounded out their model lineup with Isaac Groot N1.6, a new vision language action model that allows humanoids to use AI to drive their physical environment. But the concept is much more than a range of AI models designed for robotics. NVIDIA is also integrating everything into a new ecosystem called NVIDIA Osmo. And finally, NVIDIA unveiled their new Blackwell-powered Jetson T4000 GPU, that provides cost-effective and energy-efficient AI compute for use in robots. Through a deepening partnership with Hugging Face, NVIDIA is making their entire stack compatible and ready to go with Hugging Face's range of open-source robots. Writes TechCrunch, The bigger picture here is that NVIDIA is trying to make robotics development more accessible, and it wants to be the underlying hardware and software vendor powering it, much like Android is the default for smartphone makers. There are early signs they continue that NVIDIA's strategy is working. Robotics is the fastest-growing category on Hugging Face, with NVIDIA's models leading downloads. Meanwhile, robotics companies from Boston Dynamics and Caterpillar to Franca Robots and Neurorobotics are already using NVIDIA's tech. NVIDIA was, of course, not the only chip maker showing off their new lines at CES. AMD's presentation featured a new range of AI chips aimed at capturing market share in basically every segment. The flagship product is the MI455 GPU, which is their latest server-scale chip designed for AI data centers. AMD CEO Lisa Su claimed a 10x performance boost over the previous generation of MI chips. OpenAI president Greg Brockman appeared on stage with Su to discuss the new chip. OpenAI signed a deal to purchase tens of billions worth of AMD chips back in October. Brockman said they chose AMD as a high-bandwidth, high-memory footprint chip for inference optimization. Brockman added that the AI build-out isn't going to be about choosing one chip over the other, commenting that the idea of everyone on the planet using AI agents will require billions of GPUs. Said Grockman, no one has a plan to build that scale. The presentation also previewed the next generation of MI chip coming in 2027, with Sue promising a 1,000x performance jump in the four years since the 2023 release of the MI300X. AMD also unveiled new Ryzen CPUs for AI-enhanced consumer PCs. Said Rahul Tico, the senior VP of AMD's client business, in the years ahead, AI is going to be a multi-layered fabric that gets woven into every level of computing at the personal layer. Our AI PCs and devices will transform how we work, how we play, how we create, and how we connect with each other. No matter who you are and how you use technology on a daily basis, AI is reshaping everyday computing. One thread of the commentary was the return of bullishness among market investors. Daniel Newman again said, Every GPU and XPU that can be built between now and the end of the decade will be sold. AMD will be a massive beneficiary, as will its investors. He also said NVIDIA and AMD both announcing next generation and pushing production and delivering huge generation performance gains here at CES, and everyone that is built will be sold. Bubble bears must really hate to see it. Now, moving over to the world of devices, on Monday, Samsung's co-CEO, TM Rowe, told Reuters that they plan to double the number of handsets with their Gemini-powered Galaxy AI Assistant installed, reaching 800 million in 2026. 
In addition, Samsung are installing Galaxy AI on a range of smart appliances with Roe commenting, we will apply AI to all products, all functions, and all services as quickly as possible. Now, for those who are watching the AI competition closely, it's hard not to compare the 800 million devices that Samsung is putting Google's AI on to the total active user base of OpenAI, which is now up to about 900 million, but still in that range. And aside from being a core partner for Samsung, Google has also secured the contract to drive the AI-enhanced Siri on iPhones later this year. Apple and Samsung are number one and two in handset sales, commanding around 40% of the global market. And some speculate that Google's stranglehold on mobile AI could be part of the reason that OpenAI and Meta are looking to create new categories of AI devices. Writes the information, both companies are hoping to supplant phones. They might succeed, but don't bet on it. In the meantime, Google's Gemini models will be powering AI features on many different outlets. That should mean Google is able to improve how the models function on a variety of tasks, simply because of the data it gets from interacting with so many customers. And that could make Google's models even more attractive to potential business partners. Now, whether you agree with that analysis or not, I think it is useful to note, especially as we wrap our heads around where the narratives are starting in 2026, that Google is, as we know, coming into this year in an extremely advantageous narrative position. Now, a company that was relatively quiet last year when it came to AI, but which has felt very much waiting in the wings, is, of course, Amazon. Amazon made a couple major announcements at CES. First, they used the event to reintroduce their AI wearable, B, highlighting a host of updated features. B was acquired by Amazon last year, and they've spent the intervening time improving the product. The new features include actions, which connects B to the user's email and calendar, allowing users to convert spoken commands into action items. Next up is Daily Insights, which is designed to recognize patterns in the user's schedule over weeks and months. B says the feature is intended to recognize shifts in user relationships and recommend personalized goals related to these shifts. They said the concept is something akin to a life coach. Voice Notes allows the user to press a button to record a quick thought, which can then be integrated into a to-do list. And as we discussed yesterday, this sort of voice note and conversation capture seems to be a major focus for AI wearables this year. Finally, templates allow the user to organize and summarize large amounts of information into a more digestible form. Now, all of this is pretty standard fare for current-gen AI wearables, but B co-founder Maria de Lourdes Zolo said that the team had learned some interesting insights by iterating on the product. She wrote, We began seeing something unexpected. Customers were relying on B outside their professional lives, and it unlocked something they didn't know they needed. They started asking questions they'd never been able to ask before. How can I be a more effective communicator? What commitments have I made that I've lost track of? How am I actually spending my time? B surfaces insights across months of conversations, emails, calendar data, and health metrics from HealthKit, things that would otherwise go unnoticed. Now, I still think that there are major questions around the entire category, but it is very clear that this is a category that Amazon is going to compete fiercely for. Certainly the bigger news from Amazon, though, was the announcement of a revamped Alexa with its very own new web app. Users will now be able to access Alexa through a newly launched website, appropriately enough, Alexa.com. The goal is to give users device-agnostic access to the AI chatbot, allowing Alexa Plus to appear on desktops and mobile handsets, as well as Alexa-specific hardware. The bet is that Alexa users will migrate a lot of their everyday chatbot usage to the platform if Amazon offers a more familiar UX. And indeed, when you go to Alexa.com, it presents a normal text-based chatbot experience that is extremely familiar at this point for anyone who's using ChatGPT or Gemini or Claude, but which was otherwise difficult to access on Alexa devices. Amazon is also offering to integrate calendar and email access, allowing Alexa to be used as an AI command center for family life. Said VP of Alexa, Daniel Roche, 76% of what customers are using Alexa Plus for no other AI can do. He gave the example of using Alexa as an interactive audio recipe book, guiding the user to make substitutions based on the groceries that they've ordered. Certainly, the idea of integrating personal context into ambient AI seems to be one of Amazon's big ideas and a thing that they believe will allow them to differentiate from the competition. Will the B and Alexa ecosystems coming together to deliver a personalized AI assistant allow them to carve out a new space in the AI race? It remains to be seen, but so far, commentators are fairly optimistic. Bank of America, for example, reiterated their buy position for Amazon, pointing to the Alexa.com launch as a differentiator. NYU Stern's Connor Grennan writes, Amazon already sold 600 million Alexa devices worldwide. Most people use Alexa as a fancy kitchen timer, but Amazon is waking up that entire network. Alexa Plus is free for 200 million Prime members globally. In other words, he writes, Amazon just gave a ChatGPT competitor to 200 million people who didn't have to do anything. No new app, no new account, it's already in their living room, kitchen, bedroom, and car. As Connor puts it, Amazon isn't trying to be a better ChatGPT. They're going after the family in the home. Calendar updates, recipes, family coordination, pet care reminders. 
Here's the real insight. I talk a lot about how people treat AI like a search engine because the interface looks like a search bar. Alexa doesn't have that problem. You talk to Alexa, you've been doing it for years. The mental model is already there. Amazon didn't launch a ChatGPT competitor. They activated a network of 600 million devices that people already talk to like a person. The behavioral shift is already done. Now, the AI just got smarter. So, like I said at the beginning, as you can see, this CES is not just about AI being shoved into random gadgets, but is very clearly about some of the biggest companies in the world planting their flags heading into the new year. We've got infrastructure, we've got devices, and it's very clear that the competition is getting more and more serious. For consumers, I believe that this focus on actual products and experiences that matter is going to be hugely to our benefit, and I am excited to see how all these products come together this year. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening, as always, and until next time, peace 